I will never forget the fall of 1974 and what happened to my life at UCLA. Welcome to Scripture of the Day, and I'm here with my friend Rick Talcott. Rick is the business administrator at Compass Bible Church down in Aliso Viejo, the ones who planted us and sent us up here. Rick is on our board and has been doing all kinds of things behind the scenes to support us for the last four years, and it's great to have you here on Scripture of the Day. It's great to be here, Bobby. Thank you. You know, I knew Bobby Blakey when he was five or six years old because I knew his mom and his dad. And his mom and dad, at least his dad, was saved at USC. And you've already heard a little bit about that. But what you don't know is that they ended up at the same church that we ended up at, Grace Community Church in Sun Valley. I'm happy to have known your parents for a long time. What great godly people they are. So my dad gets saved at USC. Rick gets saved at UCLA, UCLA, and we can be friends. This is a testimony of the power of the gospel. Amen. Well, you know, during the Jesus movement of that time, everybody was getting saved. It seems like you'd walk around and people were getting saved left and right. But for me, you know, I had trouble with a number of things these people were telling me, and that was that I was a sinner, and I wasn't, because I was a goody two-shoes guy. I didn't do drugs, I didn't do alcohol, I didn't mess around with women. I was a good kid. And I'm sitting in a classroom, and I got there early, like I normally do, and I'm sitting in my chair, and I'm looking up at the board. It's a chalkboard, and up in the top left corner, there's a word that says Josh. And we sat there, and the professor came in, and he looked up at the board, and he was upset. So he goes over the board and he erases it and he looks like he snarls a little bit and then we have class and then two days later I come back in and it's, there's Josh again up in the left-hand corner. Teacher comes in mad, erases it. That happens for a week. The following week it says Josh is. And the teacher would come in and erase it and look like he's mad. And then that happened for a week. And then the third week it said Josh is coming. So after three weeks of Josh and then Josh is and Josh is coming, flyers started popping up all over campus about Josh McDowell is coming to UCLA. He's coming to Royce Hall and he's going to do a three-night seminar at Royce Hall. And for some reason I decided this is time for me to go. So I went the first night and it was very intriguing. I can't even remember what the topic was, but there was always something that would drag you into the second night. So I came the second night and the same thing happened the second night. But on the third night, Josh McDowell went through the evidence that the resurrection is true. And I left Royce Hall and I was like, if the resurrection is true, and he just proved to me that, that it was, then that changed everything for me. Everything that people told me about the gospel suddenly became true. And I realized I was a sinner and I had to do something about it. And I did. Repented of my sins, placed my faith and trust in Christ, and from that day forward, it's been totally different. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, that's what convinced you of your sin and your need for him. What was the evidence of the resurrection that caused you there to believe? Well, there are so many reasons to believe in the resurrection. There were two things that impacted me significantly. One was the soldiers that they sent to the tomb to guard the tomb to make sure that nobody stole the body. And it was explained to me that these soldiers that went to the tomb, they were not normal soldiers. They were like Marines. Mm -hmm. They were like the Green Beret back in my time. And there were, there were lots of them. And if you thought for a minute you were gonna go in and get a Marine to stand aside, these guys were killers, they were soldiers. Nobody got into that tomb. And yet it was empty. And, and how did they get into the tomb? It was a miracle that happened. And if the resurrection happened, and then all the evidence of the people that saw the resurrected mm. Christ on the road to Emmaus, in the upper room, there were hundreds of people that saw that he was resurrected. So we know he died. We know he was put in the tomb. 
We know that soldiers protected the tomb and then people saw him alive. Those were just little tidbits that were like, wow, this is true. But that's exactly what we've been reading in the book of Acts, that the people who saw him after he was resurrected, they became his witnesses. And as they spread that message, it led to many people getting saved. And we see that happening all the way down now to UCLA, UCLA. 1974, preaching the resurrection of Jesus. Royce Hall. And people getting saved. Praise the Lord for saving you, Rick. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Today's chapter is Acts 16, and we begin the second missionary journey of the Apostle Paul. And this time he's bringing Silas along with him, and he's also getting Timothy here to begin accompanying him. So we're putting together a team, we're going out again, we're going back through some of the cities where we went on the first missionary journey. And in verse 5 it says, So the churches were strengthened in the faith and they increased in numbers daily. And so as they review some of the places they have been, some of the work that God's been doing, they're encouraged. They see the church as being strong, maturing, and also growing in number as the churches are healthy and developing. And then they have a vision to go to Macedonia. And so what we're gonna see in some of these chapters in Acts is the origin story of churches we know from a letter being written there later. And today in Acts 16, we see the beginning of the church in Philippi. And we know later on the book of Philippians. Maybe you're familiar with it, you've read it. Eventually we're gonna start going through the letters of Paul, but now we're looking at the life of Paul. And, and one thing that's fascinating, if you've read it already, or if you read Acts 16 after this video, I want you to go and notice how the tone shifts here right around verse 10. And you can see it's like they, Paul and Silas are they, and then in verse 10 it says, and when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So we start to see here on the second missionary journey a we, which means that uh, Dr. Luke that uh, wrote Luke and the sequel Acts, he, he's going to start showing up as one of the traveling companions of Paul himself. And uh, one of the ladies that we get to know here, one of the souls that gets saved in Acts 16 um, is Lydia. Uh, sweet, sweet Lydia is now the baby girl of Pastor Bill and his wife, Corey, and I believe inspired by reading the scripture of the day uh, a long time ago here in Acts 16. And this lady, uh, there's a beautiful phrase about her in verse 14, that the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And we know Paul comes in preaching the gospel and the Lord, he opens up the heart of this lady named Lydia. She pays attention to what Paul is saying and she is saved. And so we rejoice. Uh, it's great to hear testimonies of souls that get saved. That's really what it's all about, is letting the gospel ring out so more souls can be delivered from their sin and enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And Lydia, she's one of those souls, Rick Talcott's one of those souls. And usually when the gospel's ringing out and beautiful things are happening, some opposition develops. And we see here, it actually is demonic op opposition where this uh, slave girl, uh, this fortune teller, uh, she is uh, calling out uh, Paul and the team as uh, they're from the most high God. And so you have here, uh, starting in verse 16, you have here the story of uh, Paul commanding the demon to come out of this woman. And then the people who are her owners, they don't like this. And so they drag them and seize them. And Paul and Silas end up spending the night in prison. And so we've come to town. We know God wants us to be here. We're preaching the gospel. We're already seeing people like Lydia get saved. And now we're in prison. And so what do they do? Well, this is one of the favorite things. A lot of us who've read Acts before, we love this. They're singing hymns. They're worshiping God. And so when they're worshiping, in the midnight hour, there's a great earthquake. And it just so happens that the doors of the prison are open. 
And you might think, well, that's great. The doors of the prison are open. This is their chance to escape, to get out, to get free. No, it turns out that's not the only door that's being opened here because the Philippian jailer is greatly concerned that his prisoners have escaped. It's going to cost him his life. And when he finds out that they're still there and uh, that everybody's okay, Paul and Silas, they reassure him. His immediate question, sirs, what must I do to be saved? So the testimony of these men thrown in prison, the way they conducted themselves, the way they were worshiping, clearly it makes a huge impression on this Philippian jailer. And they say to him in verse 31, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And it ends up being a worship service that starts in prison and extends to the household of the Philippian jailer. And he does believe in the Lord Jesus and he is saved. And so we see here God doing a work in Philippi through Lydia, through the Philippian jailer. And we see that same work. Do you see the power of the gospel when it goes out? When people find out who Jesus is, that he died, and his resurrection, as people are encountering uh, the, the, the witness of Jesus Christ, souls are being saved. People are believing in Jesus Christ. It's happening here in the book of Acts in the city of Philippi. It's happening at UCLA in the Jesus movement of the 1970s. Lydia, Rick, these are just some of the names that the gospel is saving. So I hope you're inspired as we go through and we see these cities that they go into. The story is the same. You preach the gospel in the city, souls get saved in the city, the church is built up in the city. That's the pattern that we see in the book of Acts. That's a pattern that you and I should expect here in Huntington Beach and all the surrounding cities of North Orange County, all of our brothers and sisters from Long Beach and Lakewood. Yeah, we want it. We're here. And we, ha we are preaching the gospel. We are seeing souls get saved. We are seeing the church built up. And we want to see that even echo and the ripple effects spread out into more cities. So praise the Lord for souls that are being saved. And let's keep praying for more of the work of the Lord among us. And we'll see you for more on Scripture of the Dead.